and Josie just mentioned that over 40,000 volunteers from 53 countries went to Spain to join the Millennium Brigade to defend the Spanish Republic. Uh, there are many, many books, thousands of books and articles of covering the story of the International Brigade. But few touch the participation of the Asia. So today I'm going to cover some of these. This is the whole study during the war. And the people from all over the world come to join the International Brigade on the side of the Spanish people. And uh, on the here is an image of uh, Jack Shuai, a, a Japanese uh, in the Lincoln. This is the showcase of the picture from the 15th Brigade, the English speaking uh, brigade. You can see that just in the 15th Brigade, there's a Mexican, there's a Filipino, there's a Chilean, there's an African American and there's a Japanese. So that really means international, even in the 15th period. Uh, here is the list of the men we collect over the years. Uh, all I mean, the Asian volunteers during the Spanish Civil War. And this certainly is not a complete list. Uh, you can see, you can imagine the difficulty to to, uh, to search the archive and interview the veteran and all those, all those different work. So today I'm, I'm just to mention a few of them, and which is highlighted uh, in the yellow column. Shui, which is familiar face, and uh, five of the Chinese, Yik from New York Chinatown, and Chen was captured by Franco, same time in jail. And uh, two uh, workers from Renault factory, Liu and Zhang. And just to simply, for simplicity, I just identified the man with the last name because if I, if I spell out the whole name, I think some people might have hard time to remember this. And Ning is the most active member in the Chinese volunteer. So I probably will spend some time on that. And then I will also mention one, one for me, is a very special figure in the international, in the, in the international brigade, which is uh, Dr. Q, actually we call Dr. P, uh, from Indonesia. So I think there's some confusion for the 52 countries, 53 countries, some people say mm -hmm. how many countries because Indonesia at that time was not a country. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, so that's a unique paper, is from Indonesia. And I'm going to mention uh, a doctor from India, <coughs> Dr. Akam. And uh, there are many Filipinos. This list, we, I just got an update uh, later. Probably we can add additional 10 people on this list. And there's some, there's some documents saying there are three. There were three from Vietnam. Oh. Well, Jack Shroy is well known in the International Brigade, thanks to the many memoir uh, from the Lincoln. He was born around 1900. I mean, nobody knows his exact birthday. Even in the Moscow archive, there's no document about him because he was killed in Punete in the summer of 1937. He grew up in the orphanage in Hagodate, Japan. And I went there and still couldn't. There's a group in Japan trying to, try to dig up, try to find the detail about his life in Japan, but they couldn't they couldn't uh, get anything out of that. He was working on a, on a fishing boat, and uh, then he jumped to New York in 1929. And so he met with many American progressives at that time. 
So he went to Spain with a group of uh, Americans in the beginning of 1937. He's a well-liked cook, because you, you can imagine the meal in, <laughs> in the battlefield. So uh, people suggest to put him in the kitchen, but he didn't like it at all, because he, he complained. He said, well, I came for the, to stand to fight, not to cook. So Steve Nelson, <laughs> your father, made a compromise with uh, with the, with the Shirai said, well, okay, you can carry the gun in the kitchen, carry your own weapon in the kitchen. So, what they call the cook with the gun in the kitchen. And when, the, when there's a battle, you join the, the fight. So, unfortunately, in the, in, in the summer of 1937, he was killed while delivering food to the brother. <coughs> Yeah, I'm going to talk about five, five of these, uh, uh, these Chinese. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, the new and John, they have the same background, they have the same experience, they fought in the same brigade. So I will uh, just talk new and John. <coughs> Uh, it's hard to imagine there was any Chinese in the internet today. Because at that time, in 1936, China was struggling against the uh, Japanese invasion. But Chinese people was, was sympathetic to the struggle of the Spanish Republic. And two composers, created a song called Defend Madrid in 1930, in 1936 in Shanghai. And the Chinese student in Beijing marched on the street and sing the song Defend Madrid. Can you sing it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot recognize this. <laughs> Some people did, did, did sing that so far, yeah, when we were when we interviewed people. Yeah. People don't remember that. I, I was surprised. Yes, 50 years later, we do. We were. Oh, in, good. We were in, so. The chorus will learn it. <laughs> <laughs> There's an artist here, on any point. <laughs> but even in the far remote, isolated area in Yan'an, uh, the Muslim army marched on the dirt road and carried the banner, salute the Spanish people. So here's one of the pictures from that time. And uh, Mao sent a letter in, I think in May uh, 1937 to the Spanish people and saying, your fight is our fight. We know that in the Indonesian brigade there were many nation, national nationalities, including Chinese and Japanese. <coughs> we first came really sure that there was a Chinese in the uh, Indonesian Brigade, mainly from Kang River. If anybody don't remember who Kang Ken, Ken River is, you must know his son, David Graver, who is very oh, yeah. active, exactly. who is very active in the Occupy Wall Street. <laughs> so he has a good son. But Ken when Ken stayed, Ken was wounded and stay in the Benicassin Hospital. And uh, in his room, there was a Chinese guy, Ik, I call him, he, he always said Ik, a Dong Hong Ik. He's really an, found out to be Chen law or the other real, uh, the, the real legal name probably Chen, Chen, Chen Wuxi, whatever. But anyway, in the, in the list of a Lincoln uh, roster is a Dong Hong Ik. Yeah, Yi was born in China in 1913, and he came to New York around 1930s. So he was community organizer in New York Chinatown. 
So he went to Spain in June and fought in, fought in Quinto and, and uh, Bell City. So in, in June, uh, in, in January 38, he sent a letter from Spain to a Chinese newspaper in Chinatown describing his, his experience, how he got into Spain, and how he had fought in Quinto, and then how he was wounded in the Battle of the, the Chile. You can, when we visit the Ken River, I mean, to talk about his, 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 his uh, memory about the ick, I mean, the, the moment we walk in, he showed us the tape. Uh, this tape was uh, the Good Fight video from Good Fight. Uh, it's a really good documentary film. As a matter of fact, this introduced Matt and I to this project. Here is a very short Other trip. American celebrities also supported the Lincolns by visiting them in Spain. Langston Hughes, Lillian Hellman, Dorothy Parker, and Paul Robeson all spent time at the front or in American hospitals. We had a visit at the hospital from American dignitaries, political leaders like Earl Prada, cultural people in Hollywood, so he frees this image to us to show that that's a leak. That's a leak. <laughs> so that's the first time we we really re realize that oh, it's, it's not just a someone remembers this or, or or someone heard this, but there's a real image of there. It's a moving image, and it 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 was taken in Benica scene, and you can see you can see the sea the the, the, the ocean behind. So he stayed in the hospital for a while, very long time, because he was he, uh, he was wounded on his left or right uh, uh, But at the end of the 1937, is the date, he sent a postcard to another Chinese volunteer and telling him that if you remember the history, at the end of by the end of the 37. The military situation is really bad, so they, so the the, the international brigade called out, made a call, say, well, whoever can move, please join the fight. So he sent a note to his friend in in another brigade, say, well, I'm recover, I have recovered, now I'm on the field, uh, on the way to the to to rejoin the unit. And unfortunately, in about, I think in, the, in April 1938, he was killed in Gandesa. And now I'm going to talk about another Chan, uh, Chinese guy called Akin Chen. He's really, I mean, he was probably the only Chinese who went to Spain, uh, direct coming from China. He, he was born in 1937, and uh, he was a labor organizer in Shanghai. So uh, the authority at that time, Kuomintang, would try to arrest him. So he jumped ship on a French ship, French cargo ship. The ship was going to Europe. And on the ship, he was assistant to, he, he was an assistant to the chef. Uh, there are many guess about who the chef was, and someone said the chef called the Ho Chi Minh from Vietnam. But I, I, checked the, I checked the history. At that time, Ho Chi Minh is not in China. But anyway, he was convinced by the chef to go to Spain. And he did. So when, when the chef in Asturias, he joined the militia in 
minus militia in Astoria. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not the international brigade, it's a, it's a militia. But he was captured by Franco force. So, and through so several jail, he ended up in San Pedro de Cadena. Yeah, many, oh. yeah, some of his uh, father lived there, right? Yeah. And he was released in Madrid in 1942. And we didn't know where, where he was after that. And we got a Franco's uh, propaganda film. It's very short, about 30, 30 seconds. Yes. Yeah, that means. Yeah. writing something in Chinese. <laughs> Not every character is right, but it shows that his education level. And uh, again, it's a moving image. It's real. I read my friend of mine, it must be real. <laughs> and uh, around 19, 1939, uh, after after the internet brigade left the stand, some of them uh, were detained in French camp. And some of them, and five or six Chinese were there. And one of them was able to communicate, send correspondence with, uh, with, our, with, with Chen. In, so he said, the uh, battle of the Cardania, and uh, the center was Ning. Uh, uh, camp the As I said, oh, this is the list of smuggle out uh, in, in September 38, the list of the prisoners in the jail. And uh, Chen's name is over there. As I said, he was released in 1942. I went to the Foreign Minister in Madrid and archive, I couldn't find any information. The largest country in, in the Indonesian Brigade came from France. And two Chinese uh, record Liu Jingdian and Zhang Lisu, Liu and Zhang. Uh, was with war with the with the with the fourteenth brigade. They both came from China as a as a as a contract worker in the First World War. At that time, there was a shortage of naval force uh, in the in, in 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 France and in Europe. So the no, so the Allied was already get a uh, contract worker from China. So both of them went and looked at the date. One was born in 19, 1890, one is born in 1887. So when they went to when they went to Spain, he is oh. he is uh, 46, yeah. and uh, he he was uh, 49. But anyway, after the end of all, of the First World War. They didn't go back to China. They stay out in France and work at the Renault Auto Factory. And if you look, you, you look, the, you look the, the, the history of the uh, French big Brigade, there were many workers from, from the Renault Factory went to, went to Spain. So uh, Liu and Zhang joined them. And they initially they asked to join the machine gun, 
uh, group. But what is this? What is that? Forty nine. They said no, no, no. You cannot do that. So they put they put both of them as a as a uh, schedule error. In fact, to do that, the physical demanding is much worse than as a machine gun operator. You have to carry it on miles to in the, in the front line. But anyway, so so uh, they they have no no choice. So they join they join that. That's uh, one of the one of the picture. Both of the show with the camera in the 14th Brigade, and they work very hard. And in s several times in the in the French Brigade's uh, journal or their their paper, whatever called journal, there's a mention about New and John. And this is one of them, that they are the legendary hero. And uh, they are really brave, courageous, and they couldn't spell the name. They just say Chinese camera. And I found probably any two or three articles about them. And uh, they virtually didn't take any leave. I mean, in the front line, you, you can take several days off, go to Madrid, right, sit in the hotel, take shower with, uh, <laughs> in Hollywood's uh, hotel, or they have a glory that right? hotel glory. But they did it. But one day, just a new uh, leader, that his unit leader, ordered him to go to, to take leave. So, he has no choice. He so off he went to Spain. He went to Madrid. One day on the street, he noticed that there's a picture on the front cover of a magazine called Estamba. It's pretty large size. And he looked closely and said, Oh, that's him. <laughs> so he at that time he realized that why his unit leader ordered him to go to, <laughs> to take leave. And inside it's a detailed description of how Dewey and John did in the 14th Brigade. So really, really good, uh, good article on both of them. They got wrong. I mean, as a, I mean, in the battlefield. And one, day, one time, they sent this postcard to another guy in the Chinese side. Uh, in the in, in, uh, 11th Brigade, and saying that they recover from the group, from the wounded, they are on their way back to their unit. There's no date, this postcard. I mean, I think they, 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 they cross out, it's because they're in the military zone. Yeah, you, cannot, uh, you cannot tell where you are. Mm -hmm. And as most of the Chinese we knew, that they stay on until the end of the war. So they evacuated to France because of their connection with the French worker. They were rescued right away. They probably only stay in the, in the camp for three or five days. And they made their way to China. How? I don't, we don't know. <laughs> Remember, they are workers. They don't have, they don't have really good connection. They don't have money. The money probably came from the the help of a French worker. But in any event, they went back to Yangon to join Mao's army. <coughs> Why we know that? In 1947, there was an article in the newspaper in Yangon. Remember, they were very praised by the, by the French can, Conrad in Spain. When they went, to back, went back to China, they, worked, they still worked very hard. And then they also say, well, they are good workers. They are workers' hero. So that's an article about uh, about one of them. Say, uh, the current of the Indonesian Brigade, our workers' hero. Yeah, yeah I think there is another article about uh, this is this is what you did about about uh, about Chen, you and about Chen. 
然后跟 Swiss Twin Another One 啊，林继石，李坤，呃，坤林。He is very active in many many different area. He was born in China in 19 1904 in Sichuan Province. And at the age of 15, he went to France on a uh, we call work study program. And this program, many future Chinese leaders also joined that program, including Deng Xiaoping. And so he went to France, and then he, later on he moved to England to study military in a, in a military school. And then he went to Germany in 1923 and, and uh, graduated from Göttingen University. The, the, German, the German group helped me to get the, <laughs> the, school, the university record for me. Wow. Yeah. But in 19... So in, in, while in Germany, he was very active in the Chinese community. So he added, he added a, a magazine. Uh, it really left, his left magazine uh, in Berlin. And he even, even used his address uh, as, a <laughs> as a place where, where the magazine was. was. And uh, he also very, he also worked close with the German group. So he joined the rally in Berlin Stadium in 1927. The rally is to support the striking worker uh, in China, actually Guangzhou, uh, Guangdong and uh, Ganzhou, yeah, and uh, Hong Kong worker striker. So he joined, uh, he joined with uh, S. Timer on the stage, that's the picture. I was one day. I was wandering on the, in in Berlin on the street. I look at the the the, the, the used bookstore. I found a book a picture there. Wow. <laughs> well, he went. He he was in Germany until 1933 or 34. Yeah, 33. When when uh, Hitler took power. So he, he moved to Switzerland with, uh, with, with many uh, German comrades. While in, while in Switzerland, he already divorced. He had a teenage year son living with her. But he, then he decided to go to Spain. So he left his son, I think they probably 13 or 14 years old, to the care of his comrades. And so he, he went to Spain about the summer of 1937. And he applied for joining the Italian Brigade. For some reason, was rejected. <laughs> <laughs> so he wrote a letter, a pure letter, to the Brigade, saying, you know, I made trouble to come here. But he didn't say his son was, <laughs> taken, care, was taken care of by the other people. But he said he made trouble to come, and he really wanted to fight. So he stand in there, uh, appearing there to the to the brigade, and was upset. While you stand, he was also very active to contact the the media. So there was an article about his interview with uh, with with the newspaper Aurora that was published in 1937. And uh, immediately he was wounded in Quinto. And uh, Hans Nandau, remember Hans Nandau, yes. the Austrian veteran? Yes. He told, he told us that he met him on the train to Quinto. The train got a file, <laughs> so he met him. I mean, when I first saw Hans Nandau, 1998, Immediately he said, "Well, I knew Chen Shi Li. I mean, those 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 information you really surprised me. These people, it's 50 or 60 years ago, but they can learn this Chinese right away. Not just a, not just a Han, 
we, we saw another one similar things. Yeah, I was really shocked that time. So he, <laughs> he was treated in the Mercy Hospital. Which hospital? Mercy. 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 Yeah. Mercy. While he was in the hospital, he received a package for by a Chinese seaman all the way from China. And it's a banner <coughs> sent by the, the leader of a communist, communist party in China. And uh, it's uh, to, the, to the Chinese detachment of International Brigade. And uh, the thing is, unite the people of Spain and China down with the common foe of mankind that passes. That was in 1938. As I, as I mentioned, that most of these Chinese stay to the end and uh, repatriate to France and stay in the camp. And eventually, they, they get together and they stay in the same bunker in Camp de Lourdes. Uh, here's a picture. Five, uh, five of them. I mentioned. I mentioned. I mentioned. Ding was there, and uh, there are another, another four of them, and including. Uh, yes, they also Indonesia doctor. I thought that's a big, also joined. Them. Even in that harsh living condition in a camp, if you know <laughs> the difficult uh, life in a camp, they smuggle in a mimeograph. So they print a newspaper to give an update of the Sino Japanese war uh, to the other international brigade. So they probably publish nine issues. What, what does that mean? It's, it's, it's a China, China. It's a, well, the, the magazine called Noticia the China. Uh, and this title is, uh, the subtitle is uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's a map yeah, of China. The, yes, yes, it's always a China. 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 Yeah, the map of China. Okay. Yeah, it's about the, the Chinese. Chinese and Japanese war. Okay. Yeah. The, news, the news, the news about about Sino Japanese war. Aren't there any surviving copies of those um, newspapers? Mm -hmm. This? Yes. Yeah, yeah, the copies. This is not my hand going. No, but I'm saying in libraries or collections, do they still have any copies of those yes. newspapers? I found this one, I think it's in Stanford mm -hmm. or whatever. Stanford? Yeah. yeah. I went many, many different places. Mm -hmm. So this is from yeah. okay. I believe there, 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 there are some copy, real copy in Beijing uh, museum, but we are not uh, we are not allowed <laughs> to get in <laughs> to see that. Oh. Well, they were detained in the in the uh, French, French camp. They sent a letter out to appeal to the overseas Chinese, say, well, please help us to get out of here. Because they don't have money, they, they cannot get out, and uh, the Chinese council refused to give to issue a visa because they don't have money. And so it's struggle going on and on for, ma for many, many months. And uh, so finally, they were able to get out probably in October 1939. So they stayed in the, in the camp from January to October. They moved from St. Cyprien and then, then to the Degas. And Ning was, again, made way back to China. But he, first he, was, he joined the Ace Group Army. Ace Group Army. So he fought in the anti-Japanese war. And then later, he participated in the uh, Chinese uh, Liberation War. So he was 
he was in under view of the under view stand uh, on the day when uh, New China was established. So that was in Tianjin, 1949. This picture was taken here. But he was prosecuted during the Cultural Revolution. So I'm going to talk about the, the Indonesia doctor, who we got, we fortunately got a lot of information about him. Uh, so I just call Dr. Big. He was born in Indonesia, uh, 1906, and studied in the, uh, a medical school, a pre-med school in, in Indonesia. And so he went to Amsterdam, around 1928 or 29, and attend the, attend the University of Amsterdam Medical School. Is, um, and we, we, can, we found a record in that school that he, he, he was there. And then, the, the reason we came to the information about Dr. B is from uh, Jim Persoff and, and Lincoln Vest. Jim Persoff. Do you remember him? Yeah. He, he, he was not in the Lincoln. He was in the Czechoslovakia anti-aircraft anti battle. Yeah. Yeah. But he, I saw him, the first time I saw him was in the gathering of the reunion. Yeah. But that was 19... <laughs> but anyway, he showed us his, his, uh, on his military passport a page of uh, immunization certificate <coughs> signed by T.O. Big. He said, I'm sure he's a Chinese because he's, he's uh, the unit, his unit, unit doctor. They, work, they, they, they probably got together for many months. But it turned out to be he's, he's uh, from Indonesia. So he studied, after studying in Amsterdam, he went to France when the war stopped. He went to France when the war stopped, working for the uh, CRI. Uh, red, red, red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, And then he went to Stan and first walked in Maora. So that's a picture was taken with uh, uh, the Bulgarian captain and then an Austrian. This is an Austrian uh, doctor. Not, not, yeah, Austrian doctor. Not, not, not a German. So this is a picture taken in, in at, uh, our, at uh, Maora, 1937. He also said, I mean, he, he moved from, first in the, in the anti-aircraft uh, battery, then he moved to, to, to the other unit. He also stayed all the way to the end. And so he first stayed in the uh, sensitive train in France. Okay. And there's a newspaper by Polish uh, volunteer uh, in, in the camp. They found a newspaper like everybody else. <laughs> a Polish newspaper. A newspaper, one well, of the newspapers uh, report that one day they invite Dr. Uh to the group. <laughs> and give an update about the Chinese-Japanese war. <coughs> and Dr. T also writes down Chinese. And it, it looks like Chinese, but it's really not Chinese. So you, you know that <laughs> he is really not probably fourth, third or fourth generation of Chinese in, the, in Indonesia. So, he, so uh, that's the writing. Well, later on, I can, I can show you another thing that tell the truth. And after Sensei Friend, he moved to 
Camp de Verde. In Camp, in Camp de Verde, he, uh, he stayed with the other Chinese, Chan, Chinese member. That was the group picture I showed you, and also on Friday. And he also made he also make way to Vienna uh, by his own uh, because there's a, there's a, I, 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 there's a, there's a document saying that after France he went back to uh, to Amsterdam to see to see his sweet sweetheart and but anyway so he made way back to Vienna. So we found this picture when Mao has a party to celebrate his uh, daughter, Mila, in 1930, in 1941, um, in the Zhongxiu Jie, on that day. So Mao invites several doctors for a dinner. After, 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 the, after dinner, they, uh, they have a picture of this picture. So it's, very, it's not very clear, but you can see this is definitely small. There's no question about that. And this is Dr. B. I mean, you, I cannot identify this as Dr. B. But you can see, in this I can see that he's shorter. <laughs> yeah, he's shorter. But this picture on the back, the, the, on the back, is a clear, a clear reason on who is who in this, on this group, on this group picture. And uh, in Yana, he also wrote some article. And uh, in some of the article, he said, well, he wrote that in French. Someone translated for him. So that's what I said. He really, don't, he really didn't, didn't uh, know Chinese at all. But in fact, he has a secretary in Yana and uh, for the translation and for the whole stuff. And he was just died last year, end of last year. The secretary, yeah. But he, but anyway, so he wrote an article in 1944, 40, in the end of 1944. After he learned that Ernst Timer was executed by Nazi, which I think that was on, in August 1944. So he learned that news, he wrote an article to remember Timer. Yeah, that was in 1944. So he's saying, from 1940 to 1944. At that time, he was head of the head of the internal me internal medicine. Yeah. When the Japanese war is over, he did not go back to to Indonesia. And we found out that he joined the. UNRWA, uh, United Nations Renewed and Rehabilitation mm -hmm. Administration, which is the predecessor of the World Health Organization. He joined that and was in Shandong, in northeast part of China. Uh, in this around 1946 or 1947. And in that hospital, there was a German doctor. Dr. Becker. Dr. Becker was born in Spain. <clears throat> they didn't know each other in Spain. But somehow, by luck, they met in China in 1947. So that was a picture where Dr. Becker and uh, Dr. B came together. Here you can see how short it is. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Becker and Dr. Big became close friends. In 19, at, the, uh, at the end of 1947, Dr. Becker went back to Germany. At that time, GDR was officially there. So he went back. And uh, they kept corresponding with each other, Dr. Big and Dr. Becker. Okay. Dr. Dr. Big probably we, we find some trace about where he has been after 1947. He has been in India to attend the Indian uh, Communist Party con uh, Congress. He was in Warsaw 
be another, I think it's a World Peace Conference. But anyway, again, she, he finally returned to Indonesia, probably in the early 50s. I said that Dr. Big kept writing to Dr. Big and Dr. Big wrote back. The, the correspondence stopped in 1966. So this is not the letter Dr. Becker received from Dr. Big. That's in August of 19, 1966. Remember in 1965, there's a military coup at Suharto. Hundreds of thousands of left or related people. Somehow, we don't know why it survived until at least 1966. That almost uh, a year after the after the coup. But one source said, told me that he attend his relative attend a funeral of Dr. Dick in the early 70s. So this is not confirmed, just one source. So I just mentioned one, there, there were several Indi Asian Indians in the brigade. And I just mentioned one, uh, Dr. Otto. He, he, <laughs> he was born in 1886. Okay? So when he, when he went to stand, he was 49, right? 49. No, 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 51. He was 51. Yeah. You can see the record in Benikasin, record that he was there in Benikasin. So he studied medicine in Edinburgh University, medical school. And he practiced probably in England. And then he went to Spain. But at the end of the 1937, and the situation in China, in the Liberia area, is really bad, really bad. So they asked the, the Indian National Congress to send a medical team to help them. So Indian National Congress called back, called uh, Dr. Atal from Spain, say, you have another mission. So he, he left the Spain and had the five member medical team. And they, they got to, to, to Yang'an in, in 1939. So this is a picture, this five member team has a picture with mom. Yeah, at this point I would like to change the subject and just show briefly that most of you know Dr. Bassoon, the Canadian surgeon, who invented the, the blood transfusion technique in, uh, in Spain. And Dr. Bassoon went to China out of Spain, and he died there. And, and uh, the Chinese communists make a big deal out of uh, Bassoon for many, many years. I also mentioned Dr. Atal from India and uh, Dr. Big from Indonesia. All three of them first fought in Spain in one anti-fascist war. And then they went to China to, to fight another Japanese war, anti-fascist war in China. But in addition to these three, there were at least another 19 of them as uh, we can find. Most of, uh, all of them are European doctors. So after Spain, there was a call by either Norwegian uh, medical, uh, medical team or, or British medical team to send the doctor to China to help Chinese and uh, anti Japanese war. So many doctors respond. But again, the party said, well, we have to allocate the number. <laughs> so the final name is not here. There are three, Austrian, one Bulgaria. We know he went there earlier, and two, Czechos, two from Czechoslovakia, and uh, four from Germany. 
Hungary, and Poland, Romania. So they went to China. They tried to get to the liberated area, but it was stopped by the Kuomintang. But, they, but in any event, so they, they stayed in the Red Cross, and they, they walked with the troop. They are now working in the hospital. Wherever the troop move, they move with the troop. They stay with them, they live with them. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a really special group. And uh, there's, a, there's a memorial in, in southern China about this doctor. Where? In uh, Guiyang, in southern China. Well, this is one of the pictures. I think there are only about 14 of them in, in this group picture. Yeah, we, we have some identification of them. Those are the barefoot doctors. No, no, they're not no. the barefoot doctors. No, no, no. 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 Something else. <coughs> okay, later. Well, so to conclude my, my talk with this slide, I mean, why did they go? Right? Why did they go? And in 1938, the staff of the Chinese newspaper in Paris sent a banner. On top of that, they wrote a poem to the to the to the Chinese volunteer on in on the Spanish front line. It started with it started with uh, let me translate that. Say, uh, the war in the east, the war in the west, are one struggle. And uh, at the end, they said, human being a broader system, the whole world." It's our whole net. That tells you the spirit mm -hmm. of this group. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.